Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I haven't uploaded a video in two weeks, but from now on I'm going to try to upload every two weeks. Yeah, I was just too busy with college and it was impossible for me to film and edit a video. But here I am. And today I bring you the case of a serial killer, the happy face killer. I came across this case on TikTok. I saw a video of his daughter. She was talking about um, how often people um, blame the family members of serial killers because they think the family members knew about it all, they knew what uh, that person was doing when that's not true, that's just not true. Yeah, but she talks a lot about the guilt by association and then I started uh, researching uh, this case and I thought it would be interesting to bring it on here. So today we are going to talk about the happy face killer. Keith Hunter Jespersen was born on April 6th of 1955 in Chilly Walk, British Columbia in Canada. He grew up in a violent environment. His father and his grandfather were both extremely violent and abused their families. When he was still young, he moved to Sela, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, in Washington in the United States. And Keith was a big guy and he was often bullied by his schoolmates and even his own siblings. And also because of that, he never had a big group of friends, it was hard for him to make new friends. And like many other serial killers, if you have watched any documentary, you'll know that usually they um, show signs of psychopathy at an early age and Keith was no exception. He would capture animals, torture them and strangle them to death. And he also attempted to murder two people. The first time was when he attacked a boy by beating him and the second time he tried to drown a boy. He also claimed that he was raped at the age of 14 but this was never confirmed. After high school, Keith got married with a woman named Rose Huck. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but they had three children together. And he became a truck driver to uh, support his family. A few years later, Rose started to suspect that her husband was cheating on her because she started to receive calls from other women and she thought that that was weird, that was not normal. And then they got divorced in 1990 and that left Keith completely devastated. And I guess like all of us humans, we all have a dream and Keith also had a dream. He wanted to work as an officer with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, but he suffered an injury during his training and his dream was over. He then began to work as an interstate truck driver and that was when his killing spree began. His first known victim is a woman, and I'm so sorry if I'm going to mispronounce the name, I really don't know how to pronounce, but she was named Taunja Bennett, I'll put it, the name on the screen, and Keith had invited her over to his house. They had an argument and he strangled her to death with a rope. Her body was found days later and her case remained unsolved until a woman named Laverne Pavliak claimed that she and her boyfriend, John Sosnovsk, were responsible for her death and obviously they were arrested. Now if you have watched any serial killer documentary you probably know that usually serial killers don't like when other people take credit for their crimes. Keith was no exception. He wrote a confession letter on a bathroom wall of a truck stop and he signed with a happy face. And then he wrote letters to the media outlets and police departments, all signed with an happy face. And that's why that he's known as the happy face killer. That's where the name came from. But you may be wondering, why would someone confess to a crime they did not commit? Well, Laverne read the news about Tunja's death and saw it as an opportunity to get out of a long-term abusive relationship with her boyfriend, John. Basically, she didn't know how to get out of that relationship, so she made up a whole story. She set up a meeting with investigators and gave them a false confession. She used the details that she had read on a newspaper of how John had forced her to help him rape and kill Taunja and then get rid of her body. The couple was arrested on March 5th of 1990 and they were both convicted on February 8th of 1991. John was sentenced to life in prison while Laverne was sent to 10 years in prison and she did not expect that. She thought that she would serve way less time than what they gave her. So then she admitted she made up 
the story, all of it, but no one believed her. But on January 7 of 1996, they were both released from prison after the real killer confessed the crime. It gave police officers uh, details that only the killer would know and um, the location of Taunja's purse that was not at the crime scene. So they were convinced that Laverne and John had nothing to do with Taunja's death and Keith was the real murderer. I took her home. I thought I was going to get lucky. After a night of heavy drinking, the two left the bar and headed back to Jesperson's suburban red brick home, where he lured her and attempted to have sex. Comments were made and different things, and, and uh, an altercation happened, and I struck her. I actually had hit her in the face, and for some reason, I just kept on hitting her in the face. And because of that, I, I feared going to prison for slugging her in the face and causing bodily injury, and so I killed her. After you meant to kill her? Oh, yes, I did. I meant to kill her to cover up the assault. You say it very matter-of-factly, with no remorse or hint of remorse. Uh, it is matter-of-fact, that's what it is. Two and a half years after Tawinja's death, a woman named Claudia, as Keith claimed, because one thing that pisses me off about this man is that most of the times he doesn't even know his victims' names. He doesn't remember. <sighs> But anyway, this woman was raped and killed by Keith. And a month later, the body of Cynthia Lynn Rose was found. She was a prostitute and it's believed that she was also one of Keith's victims. Killed her over a parking spot? Yes, I did. It was, it was supposed to be a parking spot. On November of that same year, the body of another prostitute named Laurie Ann Pentland was found. What about Laurie Ann Pentland? Yes, I did kill her. Yeah. Her, her attitude was like uh, her life was all hell and she didn't want to be around and, and she wanted me to feel sorry for her and I just, well, you know, I could kill you and put you out of your misery and she said, go for it, so I did. She asked you to kill her? Well, I, I told her that, you know, if your life's so bad, why don't you just end it? Six months later, he killed a woman named Cynthia or Carla. He wasn't sure uh, what her name was. But on April of this year, she was identified as being Patricia Skippel. A year later, he killed a woman uh, he claimed to be named Suzanne. Another year goes by, and he crosses paths with a woman named Angela. He gave her a ride from Washington to Indiana. During the trip, they got into a fight, and Keith ended up raping her and strangled her. Before he strapped her to the undercarriage of his truck and dragged her face down and her body was only found after Keith was arrested. Is she the victim that you tied under the truck? Yes, she is, yeah. Why did you do that? Well, I felt that by dragging her under the truck that I would destroy all evidence of who her identity was. Did you choke all of the women? Yes, I did, yeah. Why did you choke them? That's what I had done with the first one, so I never changed. It had worked for the first time, so I went to the second and third, fourth, and fifth, sixth and seventh. It is so gruesome what you're describing. I mean, there's a possibility that these people's family members might be listening to you describing this. I'm sorry it happened. Wish it never happened. And can we move on? Can we move on? Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, it's done, it's over with. How would you feel if somebody did this to your daughter? Well, I would probably search him down and kill him. Yes, I'd like to go back in time and change it and make it all go away and make it all peaches and cream again, but I can't do that. At the time, I could justify each and every one of those murders, and at this time, I cannot. After that, he killed his own girlfriend. She was Julie Ann Winningham, and he killed her because uh, he felt that she was only interested in him for his money. That's not a reason to kill someone, like, just break up if you think she's only with you for the money, break up. He quickly became the prime suspect on her murder, which I think he wasn't expecting. He was arrested on March 30th, and he actually had sent a confession letter to his girlfriend's brothers a week before he was arrested. Um, and after he was arrested, he tried to commit suicide twice, but then he, he ended up confessing to all of his crimes. And in prison, apparently he admitted that he had committed about 160 murders. But this was never confirmed, so we don't really know if he actually killed that many people. I seriously hope not. He was convicted of all murders he committed 
in California, Florida, Nebraska, Oregon, Washington, and Wyoming. Keith Jasperson is now serving three life sentences at the Oregon State Penitentiary. In 2009, he was indicated for murder in Riverside County and was extradited to California to face charges. So he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, which is a good thing. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'm going to leave the TikTok of his daughter here uh, if you guys want to check that out. As usual, let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments. Uh, I love hearing your thoughts. Reading in this case, it's not hearing. <laughs> if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I'm going to try to upload videos every two weeks as I was trying to do. I'm super busy with college right now, but I'm going to try my best. And if you want to suggest a case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked in the description box down below. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.